he looks at me and I'm like, hey, bud, can I get your band? Like, you're kicked out. And he's like, no. And he, like, stormed off. No. And, like, went to Patton and just sat there and, like, you put his hands in his, his hands and, like, his palm was just staring at the ground. I was like, okay, like, whatever. I'm just going to chill here. Five minutes later, he comes up. He goes, I'm sorry, dude. <laughs> I'm like, all right, dude. Like, you, don't need to, like, you, don't, you don't need to, like, sit here and, like, apologize. Like, I really don't care. I was, like, you can't come back in. He's like, he's like, all right, dude. Like. And mind you, he was like coming to tears right now. Like this is like he's he's like crying to me. He's like he's like my love of my life's in there. He's like and she was dancing with another man. And like he said it really deep and like scary. And I'm just like, Oh god, like this is not gonna turn out well. I've got like literally the cops are standing right next to me. They're just like it's just like bar patrol, like they're just hanging out. Like most of us are cool with them, like they'll come talk to you, let's catch up. That's fucking and like they're like the dude's like the cops standing behind the guy. Like, while he's telling me this story, and he's just making faces at me. And I'm struggling to keep a straight face while this kid's crying. <laughs> some girl inside. He's like, dude, I, can't, I need to go back in there. I promise I'll keep my hands in my pocket. And I'm like, dude, look, man, it's not going to happen. Like, I'm sorry. Like, you you're ru- not I'll keep ruined. my hands he's in my like, pocket. You ruined this like, kid's night. He's just like, <laughs> well, he starts making, he goes, hmm. <laughs> I'm, just like, I'm just like oh god this is not good and i'm like dude sorry man like come back another time he's like i fucked up he's like and she won't give me another chance because she's she's just over me she wants another man now and i'm like dude i'm like and at the same time all this is going down like i'm like half smiling about to cry out of laughter and i've got the cop standing behind him still making faces at me but I'm not looking at him because I see it in the corner of my eyes. And I'm just like, this is the worst experience of my life. Because, like, I'm the only one working the door. Like, I've got a lot of things going on around me as and people coming and coming out. And I've got this dude crying about his girlfriend who's in there. And I'm just like, sorry, dude. Like, maybe next time. You know what I mean? Like, I'm just like, <laughs> maybe next time. Just come back next time. But no, no. All right. So we've been talking about the Win- Wim Hof. Is that how you pronounce it? Yeah. Wim Hof method. I mean, we, yeah. Breathing techniques. Really conscious breathing in general. Yeah. And how to but like Wim Hof is kind of like popularized with it, okay, and rightly so because he set like twenty world records to prove that like he really is like a, a lot of the techniques are ancient, you know, thousands of years old. Pranayama is like you know another word for it, like you know, uh, so he's fire using breathing, these pranayama. ancient techniques to to master things like. I mean, he climbed Mount Everest with yeah, no yeah, shirt on. Yeah, is that right? No shorts. Yeah. No shorts. Did like an hour and forty minutes like ice exposure, which they said it's. So con- that's like that's clear proof. Yeah. Yeah, he's clear a master of it. Proof. So like, if he calls it the Wim Hof method, like, it's okay because he's clearly like a master of it, and he's trying to get it to his. Those own are the people. tangible but, results. Like, you'll have, yeah, you have people like you know, in comments, things like that, be like, you know, this isn't, the, you know, he stole this. This is. You know, this is not his, you know, he didn't make this up, which is kind of like true in a way. But like for one, he's mastered it to the point where like he's setting world records, like multiple world records to prove his like mastery of it. And then he's just using it, you know, to get it to as many people as possible. So it's called the Wim Hof Method. But really, that's a weird thought. It is. And I, I think I read a quote somewhere, like somebody said it talking about how. Like, when people time travel and they go to the future, they're always like, oh, like, don't do little things here or there because it'll, like, drastically impact the course of things. Like, and when, by the time we get to this point in real time, it'll be different. And then, like, you go back to real time and people are like, oh, like, if I do something little, it's not going to make a difference. I don't it's think like, I'm following you. Okay, like, so, it's like an abstract, like, hypothetical, I'm assuming? Yeah, so, like, okay. so, like, if you time travel in the future. Have you seen, like, in a movie when people time travel in the future and they're like, don't do this little thing or like don't change this because uh, it'll affect real time. Do you get, you follow me? You Okay. So like, so like, we're, like, let's just say like we're here. Um, okay. And like, wait, wait, they're saying it'll affect the past. Yeah. So like, let's say like we jump ahead like five years from now um, and I'm like, Hey, don't do that because you're going to affect time. And like this moment will not exist in five years. Wouldn't that be if they go to the past though? Either, either way, like either way, they're just like, don't like, uh, don't do it because it'll, it'll change It'll change the course of events. So wait, wait, like, are the people from the future going to the present? Yeah. No. Oh uh, my god. No. Wait, the people from the present are going to the future. Yeah. Or the past. How Either does or. the future I read affect it, the past? I read it both ways. Like, okay. So then, like when they go back to real time, can we just run with the past one? Yeah. Because okay, that fine. that makes that sense makes to me. Sense. Okay. Okay. So then they're like, "Don't do that because you're going to change time." 
and it's gonna yeah. it's gonna mess up everything so then they get to real life like real time and people like just like even in today like real society people are like oh if i do this small little thing it's not gonna make a difference mm-hmm. but it does like every little thing you do i 10 out of 10 believe like impacts your life or somebody else's life mm. it's like if you go to the store like let's just say like i go to walmart like every person there whether or not i interact with them or not like there's a reason that they're there at the same time that I'm there, which I think is kind of weird to think about. I think about that a lot. Yeah. I, I always think, like, I wonder if as something somebody's doing way over in, like, New York, uh-huh. I wonder if they're doing something that impacts, like, what I'm doing right now. Yeah. You know, like the butterfly uh-huh. effect or, like, yeah, yeah, that's, yeah. like, the Eastern interpretation of karma mm-hmm. is, like, cause and effect. Yeah. Like, every action is a reaction and every reaction is an action itself. Mm-hmm. Which is such a weird fucking thought because like, <laughs> yeah. but it's so true. Like, like any, any point you want to put in your life, like from the start, whether it be five years old, like it's all a reaction. Mm-hmm. It's all just part of like the ebb and flow. And uh, to yeah. be like conscious or at least more conscious of that and uh, bring that to your awareness at least a little bit to be like, yo, like this does have an impact. Like I'm, I'm just a node in a network and yeah. my impact is immeasurable at times like especially with the internet it's like i don't know like like with this podcast for example like i just enjoy doing this so i'm like i'm just gonna have cool people on or people i find cool sit down have a conversation upload to youtube don't think about it but it's like i have the ability potentially to like impact like way more people Mm and than just a conversation if we were sitting in my like i don't know in my uh i can't not think of the name of that room your bedroom. Uh, family room. Your bathroom. Family room. <laughs> okay. Bathroom. Yeah. If we're, if we're sitting, talk we're, bathroom, you're sitting but... on the sink and I'm sitting on the toilet. Uh, well, he came to green. Are came your from ancestors from Latin America? Anybody? <laughs> uh, Pat Rodriguez. I think that's pretty, last name. This is a pretty white fucking group right here. This is, yeah. Nah, so I would, I would agree 100% with you. We are some pasty like motherfuckers. Oh, come on, man. I got some style. Come on. I'm somewhat foreign. You look out by though. I don't know if I've ever told you that. That's when, terrible. No, when you when you when your hair is very blonde, <laughs> yeah. you look someone I'll buy it. I'm just gonna throw that bullshit. I don't buy that. <laughs> I've never heard that, and I don't I don't want to hear it again. <laughs> <laughs> when your hair is very light, I'm just throwing it out there, Jordan. But you don't look bad. You it's look, not a bad. You all. look. Uh, it, there's not a. That's not a compliment. Roast me. You look like. I don't know. Give it to me, Daddy. You look like Jordan Fisher. That's what you look like. You do. That's, that's a very accurate statement. Yeah. That was... Dude, fuck you, man. Yeah, that was... What, what are you thinking, man? Does he look that like... On camera, too? Yeah, it's like really? something... You just, oh sometimes you just go too God. far with things. Like, Jesus. sometimes you just go too far. Like, there's like a, there's like boundaries in this Who world. Who would have like, thought that would oh, get out of his mouth? Oh, you're going to call me an albino. I always thought Jordan looks like a... Uh, what are those old humans that have the... Uh, the <laughs> No, 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 the, uh, Homo sapiens? No, 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 you're on the same, you're on the same. Neanderthal. Page. Neanderthal, you look like a fucking Neanderthal. <laughs> Always thought that you have really thick eyebrows, like, your, like, bone structure is very thick on your face. Uh-huh. You look like a fucking... Apparently yeah. I have that dream. I always eyebrow. thought I would eye see line. There, everybody oh, has a percentage God. of Neanderthal in them, and I'm like, I bet Jordan has a high percentage of Neanderthal based off his facial structure. That's awesome. Oh, yeah. That's awesome. Yes, yeah, take that. Thing. I'm fucking albino. Oh, I love that. That's oh, I love that. That's funny. I'm a Neanderthal. Neander- Is it Neanderthal or Neanderthal? I think it's Neander- tall. Like tall. Neander- Neander- Neanderthal. That's the right way to say it, but I mean, yeah, I always fuck that up. So what it does is like. I think there's some stat out there. I don't know the stat, but it's like something. There's like a certain percentage of taste is actually from smell. So like the two seem really fucking correlated. Yeah. So you they're like linked. It's kind of like whenever someone's like someone says like, "Oh, this tastes like shit," like, and someone's like, "Oh, do you eat shit?" <laughs> you know what I mean? And you're like, "No, like based off of like what shit smells like, this tastes like shit." Like, but like. I don't like it's a big thing with beer. So, like if you ever drink beer from a draft bottle and a can, which would be the order that you would drink it in, like as in like taste wise. Probably uh, draft. Draft would be like my first, yeah. and then I would personally go with bottle and then can. Can would be yeah. last for me. I'd probably go that way as well. And it's all based on like. So with a can, you're drinking it and you're shoving like an aluminum can up against your nose, so all you smell is metal. That's why you get most of the metal taste from it. And then like a draft, 
you're putting the beer in your nose. So like yeah. you're like even if it's just there, it's like in your nose. So you're like getting more of the actual taste of the beer rather than a metal can. And then with a bottle, you're getting like your surroundings. So if you're sitting in like a a bar somewhere, it's whatever's gonna be around you. Plus, what's the first thing you do whenever you taste something? Like, especially something you, you smell for the first time. Yeah, yeah. you smell it. I'm not gonna lie, I wasn't too sad when I got into that car accident. Totally worth it. What? <laughs> oh, oh, Emily oh. Voss, if you're I don't think anybody's ever said that. not at her. <laughs> please, <laughs> please elaborate. I've never Did heard anybody so not regret. I, um, was so, it your fault? No, it was not. Okay. Um, so, someone... I, New Year's Eve. Yeah, we cannot give out names. That's... Yeah, no name dropping delete that oh, name. Oh, I forgot about um, This name. human being did not yield on a left turn and hit my friend's car. So Total I bullshit. I was in the back seat and I was not wearing my seatbelt. However, in the state of Missouri, it is legal for you not to wear the seatbelt in the back seat between the ages of 7 and 17. And guess what? Why does, I, why does that have to be age specific? That's really? really I, weird. I don't know. That is a weird law. That's what the lawyer said. So basically, I was 16, so technically it was legal. But, um, so I flew into the passenger seat and broke my arm. Well, you put your arm out. Yeah, I did. To because the seat I went, behind you. And it just okay. like, and his snapped his arm, half. like, completely my shattered and shattered. Oh. Yeah. Oh. So, I mean, like. Like, to brace your. Yeah, to brace my impact. Basically, yeah. he doesn't regret it because he made bank. T. Gotta pay for college <laughs> so, somehow. Oh. Yeah. Like, some of us walk in front of school buses others i had yeah I, I had a friend when he was two kids i played high school soccer with one of them got in a car accident when he was like nine or something like that and he he inherited like a fuck ton of money whenever he turned 18 yeah. and then the other one was almost he got hit by an ice cream truck and the ice cream truck they broke right before they were about to run over his head when he was like a toddler oh my god yeah oh, like he was like inches away but they both got like a ton of money whenever they turned 18 didn't they say he was gonna have like millions of like they put in like a money market account and then he's gonna have like yeah he like invested it from a young age then like the compounding interest just like rose and by by a certain point it was pretty young too because i mean he he started investing that when he was or his parents did when he was like five whenever he's like 21 or something it was something really young i think it was a million but it's something like that whatever it was like he he put his money away and he was pretty smart move honestly do you want to talk about uh your summer summer what summer was this Last summer. So, so summer like 2018? 2018, yeah. Working on the weed farm in Washington. I didn't know if they called it a weed farm or not. Yeah. Okay. Or like an I-502 farm, because that's like what the laws are. They're called I-502. That's, I feel so like I that's what you, I tell. I guess like, if you want to be technical, it depends on who you're telling. Like, if you're talking to like someone that like a lot old, like that was like a lot older than me, they'd be like, oh, we do this. Like, oh, I work at an I-502 farm. And like some people know what it is and some people didn't. And they just look at you like, oh, what is that? And then it's like, uh recreational marijuana <laughs> but, i mean it's all legal in that state where was it at uh in okanagan washington oh no way yeah oh that's cool it's like a micro desert there kind of in the mountains okay super hot and dry oh really lots of dust really i don't i don't imagine like washington being that way i guess it's it, desert though obviously. it's a weird state like the some like some of the mountains like it's so beautiful and like over on the coast it rains a lot but like that's area in central washington is just do you see like, that a micro desert yeah, like, what the fuck? there's a squirrel right there get the dart oh, <laughs> get the dart gun yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah no it's there's some days it's like 105 like all week and you're just like dude it's hot as shit outside that's ridiculous yeah, I mean, it's fun, though. What was, like, day in the life? Like, lay it down. Uh, it depends. Like, sometimes we were, when we were getting the farms ready, it was it honestly sucked a lot. Because, uh -huh. like, it is cool to be working with weed plants, like marijuana plants everywhere. But when it comes down to it, you're a farmer. So we'd, like, dig holes for, like, 10 hours a day. Just digging holes. Because we had to dig What for? We, had a, we were digging all the holes for the third farms, for them to, all the plants go in. So, like, we'd dig a hole about like four feet wide and like four feet deep and then we'd put a 55 gallon bucket in that was co or we dug all the holes first and we dug like uh -huh. 150 of them or something like that and then we took a 55 gallon drum like bucket cut off the bottom of it and put it in the holes like filled it back around with dirt and then put soil in the 
like in the drum and then pulled it out. So like there was just like soil in the middle of it, like that big. And that's where we planted all the plants. Okay. That makes sense. So then like we then covered it with ground tarp and then cut all the holes where the soil was and then put plants in all of them. Did you learn a lot? Yeah, actually I learned, I learned a bunch on like a lot of like random handiwork like stuff. Cause we built, help build like hoop houses and then like, just like laying ground tarp, you like lay them in with uh, ground stakes and like hammer them down, just like building random stuff. And uh, so I definitely learned a lot about that. And then obviously learned a lot about like growing marijuana and how to just do different things and how much like actually has to go into it. And then also like the business aspect of it. There's so much that like laws and taxes that you have to follow and like really, really strict regulations that have to be followed by like each farm. So kind of makes it tough. Okay. Like, what are some of the, like, the weird regulations? Like, all the waste. Like, anytime you have waste from the plants, or, like, when you harvest all, like, the stocks you cut off, you have to keep it all and, like, weigh it separately, and it all has to be logged and recorded. So, if, like, the LCB, which is, like, the liquor and cannabis board, um, uh-huh. if they come, they, uh, they can, like, look at all those logs and make sure that you didn't, like, do anything weird with it. So, you can't, pretty much, like, you can't take it and black market it. Okay. And then yeah. there has to be cameras on all the farm and inside all the farm area. And you have to keep like 40 days of uh, footage there and they can audit your cameras whenever they want. If they like want to come visit and audit your cameras, they can do that. Do you have like Google comments on your phone, Jordan? I feel like you're that guy. Comments on my phone? No, like topics. Like, you yeah, I got two. What you got? Uh, well, one was the compliment you gave me. The thing. Thank you, by the way. Appreciate that. Wait, which, which compliment was this? Uh, that he I actually don't remember any compliment. Jordan's being ignored in this thing, entire conversation. First thing he brought up in the podcast is so, he, this is his conversation starter. Niner. Told me ins- uh, I inspired him earlier. I inspired him. I was the podcast. That, yeah. that was the start. And the thing is, my first topic. He's told me multiple times in the past like six months. I'd say that I inspire him, and I he, Jordan does inspire me too, though. So I, I'm lying. Yeah. I inspire Niner. Yeah. Moral of the he's story. he's just his own man. He he's uh he wants to move to Europe and uh yeah he wants yeah, he's he's different. Jordan's on a different level. He's something different, man. <laughs> You are one of the most unique people I've ever met. Yeah, Jordan. You guys are just, this is a heartwarming experience. We just, love you, Jordan. Should we all hug? Oh, wait, there's microphones in the way. Uh, I'm not hugging you guys. Damn it. Awkward. 